engineering mathematics, special functions. At the end of the subtopics, you should be able to understand special functions and method of series integration, Frobenius method. Explain the concept of regular and the regular singular points. Bessel differential equation and Bessel function. Legendre differential equation and Legendre polynomial. Hypergeometric differential equation and hypergeometric polynomial. You're welcome to MTS 315 uh, class, Engineering Mathematics. So today we are going to consider special functions. And so you all know before that uh, functions in mathematics generally is just like uh, the relationship between two sets. In this case, now I said set A and set B. So we call it the relationship between the two sets. That is a function. And then at times, some people can put it as if uh, is a rule which maps a number to another unique number. But in engineering, there are many functions that you need to know. For instance, you are familiar with algebraic function before. And as you can see on the board, uh, we're talking about algebraic function. It's either it is polynomial and constant function, quadratic, could be quartic linear functions. These are the examples of algebraic functions. Another one is elementary transcendental functions. It could be exponential, logarithms, periodic, power, or hyperbolic function. Another one here is called special functions. There's a category here, as you can see on the board, we call it step function, floor function, string function, and sine function. Uh, that's not all. We have another one called number theoretical functions. That one could be categorized into sigma, Euler, Euler function, and partition functions. So among all these, the one we're going to consider in this class, this is where we have them. Now, this one here, there's something called Bessel differential equation. The solution of this Bessel will give us what is known as Bessel related function. And we also have another one called Legendre differential equation. The solution of this particular problem will give us what we know as Legendre polynomial in some textbooks. They put it as function, but I think we should consider it as a Legendre polynomial. The next one, there's something called hypergeometric differential equation, or at times they call it Gauss. So the solution of this particular problem will give us what is known as hypergeometric functions. So let's proceed. Now let's look at what we have on the board. Wow, wonderful. See the first one. See the second one. You agree with me now that if we should multiply both sides of this one by x squared, we will have this. So which means that this and this, they are the same. Because by the time you multiply this one by x squared, yeah, what you have the second one. And this is a typical example of Bessel differential equation. At times, they can put it like this. If you look at this question number two, we see now that here, yeah, n is equal to zero. So this number two here is Bessel differential equation of order zero. Why this one is Bessel differential equation of order n? As you can see, n a. So let's go to number three. Number three, look at what we have been on the board. Wow, wonderful. This is a differential equation, right? And you notice that all these examples, they are actually linear. So this is a typical example of um, legendary differential equation. Let's go to number four. Number four, we have this. See, look at this one here. This is hypergeometry. Now, in some textbooks, they write it like this, or in some textbooks, write, both of them, they are the same because by the time you expand this and you multiply, you will see that both of them are the same thing. So what do you want to achieve in this class? At the end of this topic, one, you will understand special functions. What I mean by this is that at the end of this class, you'll be able to understand Bessel differential, Bessel function, uh, legendary polynomial, and hypergeometry polynomial. At the end of this class, you'll be able to understand the two, the three. And at the same time, you understand this method of series integration, or at times they call it series uh, power series, series solution, or Frobenius method. And I'm very sure at the end of this class, you'll be able to explain the concept of regular and irregular singular points. Ah, objective number three. You will know Bezier differential equation. In fact, I'm very sure that you're able to write Bezier differential equation offhand. And at the same time, you will understand what is known as Bezier function. And legendary differential equation as well. And legendary polynomial. Hypergeometric differential equation and hypergeometric polynomial. These are the things you are going to learn. You are going to understand at the end of this class. Let's go to page three. Now, let's introduce ourselves to what is called ordinary points and singularity of a linear differential equation. Now, look at what we're having on the board again. Bezier differential equation of order n. Now, when x is zero here in equation one, you will notice that this one will give us infinite. So we can say that x equals zero is a singularity. 
of that a question one now is the singularity removable yes because look at number two now it is a removable singularity because one over x and one minus n squared over two s squared they are undivine at s equals to zero but it is possible for us to multiply both sides by x you remember in the class i first of all multiply both sides by x in this case and i discover that hmm it's still not removable because by the time you multiply both sides by x you see our one over x here by the time you multiply both sides by x squared everything will be removed so they are undivine at that point s equals zero but it is possible to redivine this function at s equals zero by multiplying both sides by x squared what i'm trying to say is that if you multiply both sides by x squared here you will notice that this problem we are talking about this problem we are talking about it will removed to be removed so that's what we're talking about there let's go to number three so if it has a singularity if we can remove the singularity it means that we can use the method of series integration to solve the problem what is the method of series integration we assume y is a series from r is zero to infinity a r s k plus r you notice that we can expand x k plus r to be equal to s over k and s to the power r to give us something like this as you can see now when i but the point is this a naught must not be zero in fact in Bezier differential equation in Bezier, by the time we are solving Bezier differential equation this a naught we are going to assume a naught to be one over two raised to the power n then gamma of n plus one that is it so a naught can never be zero now let's compare equation one do is Bezier with this one you will notice that by the time we compare this and this then p is one over x and q is what one minus n square over x squared as we have here now let's consider the following remarks the wonderful remarks if the function p and q are finite when x is put equals to zero hmm, the x is zero is called an ordinary point what i'm trying to say is that look at this one as we have this coefficient in the case of the z differential equation one over zero x is zero here you will notice that this thing here we practically give me on divine here on divine here can you see that of course look at it one over zero so definitely that is not ordinary point but by the time we multiply both sides by x and x squared it remains finite because by the time we multiply both sides by x this one become one isn't it and even by the time you have one here there's nothing you can able to put x again and likewise here by the time you multiply this one by x squared you see that this one will give me x squared minus n squared so by the time you put x equals to zero there you get finite so definitely Bezier differential equation is of regular singular points not ordinary ordinary is when you put zero here directly you put zero here directly and you get finite are we together now finite sense that maybe one two three so let's go to this remark now if we have ordinary points or we have regular singular points then we can use Frobenius. otherwise please don't use Frobenius method at all it's not advisable that is what we are saying here that if p and q do not satisfy either of the two conditions what are the two conditions one it must be ordinary singular points or regular singular points that's where we can use frobenius method now let's divide the term now everything i've been saying so far so good and i put it again and not that time again in terms in mathematical language anyway so look at it a point x equals x naught is said to be an ordinary point of equation two if each of function Q is analytic as x equals to x naught. What we are saying here is that by the time you put x equals to x naught in the functions, look at this function f naught, f1, fn. They are the function of this problem. They are the function, the, the, the product, the multiple coefficient of the dependent variable. So by the time you put the singular point there and you have analytic that it is finite, then you can call it ordinary. Now look at if you can please take a look at your lecture notes, page five. You see the way I redefine everything I've been talking about. Look at this one again. This is where I'm talking about regular points. Now, by the time you multiply it by, you multiply the coefficient by the singular, you no, know, x minus x naught is equal to zero. So, x equals to x naught. So, by the time you multiply this, are we together now? And if it is analytic, then we call it regular. Otherwise, we call it irregular. So, please take a look, just read very well. Because, for instance, I can ask you that, what do you understand by regular and irregular singularity points? So, I expect you to explain to me very well. So, let's continue now. Bezier differential equation this point was actually developed, uh, discovered by daniel banoli but it was friedrich bezel that generalized it so let's take a look at the problem now like i've explained before you see now that both of them are bezel equation of order n where n is the order of the bezel so this is bezel function as you can see very wonderful so the following 
remarks, they are actually true. Each of them, they are true about this function in the sense that if you evaluate them, they are true. So now, let's take a look at this now. Now, look at it now. We assume y equals to a r x is power k plus r. You know, in series, we can express it like this. It's very simple. This is when r is 0, when r is 1, r is 2, r is 3. So differentiate this first time, k plus r will come down here. Differentiate the of course, we subtract the power pi by 1. Differentiate the second time, you have this. Then this, this, this. Subtract back to the Bezier equation, you have this. Now, remember, you can ask your friend in class, how did I explain this? I said, look at this. By the time you put x minus 1 here, this one will give us minus 2. And while you are solving this, please take note, know how to jump very well, so that you won't have a long working sheet. So that is it. Now, by the time you put minus 1 here, this one, you put it down here, you have this. And look at this one too. By the time you expand this, that's why I underline it, you will have this. Now I said, combine the first, second, and fourth time because they have the same power. The power of x, k plus r minus 2. So you have only 2. That is our equation 3. Now, when r is equal to 0, we form our indicial equation. Now, not only that, when r is 0, you will see that you have the power of sk minus 2 and sk. And the coefficient, this one is the smallest. x raised to power k minus 2 is small compared to this. So we take the coefficient of this one equals to zero together with a naught. Look at how I put it. I said, yeah, x to power k minus 2 is the lowest power of x. We shall set the coefficient to zero. So this is called in this year equation. So the next thing is this. a naught here is not zero. Please take note in that. a naught is not zero, but the coefficient is actually zero. So if k square minus n square is zero, then it means that k square is equal to n square, which means that k is what plus or minus n. So let's go to when r equals to one. When r equals to one, you can see what we have in here again now. So we have this expression. And remember, the lowest power is this. S raised to power k minus one is lower. So that means we set the coefficient equals to zero together with a one. Now look at very obvious that in this case, look at the two k minus one, two k plus one minus n square is not equal to zero, but a one is zero. Now look at this secret now. When r is 0, we have this. When r is 1, we have this. So how do we do it now? We need to use the method introduced to you by Dr. Dawdu now to make the power equal. So look at it now. To make the variables equal, k plus r dot minus 2. This is the coefficient of, if you go back to your equation 3, this thing, this is the co this coefficient here, we equate to coefficient a. Then we put dot here. That is technique number 1. Please don't forget, it's very important. So you have this, you can see that k, we cancel k, you have this. So substitute this one back to equation 3, then you have what we have on the board. Now, what is the rest now? We proceed. If that is the case, you can see now that we can factorize because the power here and the power here, they are now the same thing. So in this case too, s k raised to power, s raised to power k plus r is the lowest now because we only have only one, so which is the lowest. So and then don't forget, please, when you are equating this one back to equation 3, remember, you only substitute in the summation. Don't substitute it here. Get me right. Don't substitute it here at all. So you have this. Then the next thing is this. You collect the like times. Then you have what we refer to as the reoccurrence formula. And this one is very simple. See, it's very simple. K plus R plus 2 is A. K plus R plus 2 is A. When you pick 1, you have K plus R plus 1 plus 1. So when you add that 1 plus 1, then you have 2. So that is it. We've got the recurrence formula. That's our equation 6. Now, recall that we've obtained that k equals to plus n minus n from in this year. So let's consider k case 1. Case 1 is when k equals to n in equation 6. So we put k equals to n a. Then we factorize. We put r equals to 0. r equals to 1. Remember that a1 is 0. Then when r equals to 2, then please work it out. So we already have our a a naught. We know a naught. We know a1. No, we know a not to be a constant that is not zero. Then we know our a1, we know our a2, a3, a4. So let's go back to the series solution we are zoom. So when k equals to n, that's the first solution we are dealing with. So we express it, we substitute those things back, then we have this. We cannot stop because what we are trying to remember that we said that the solution of a Bezier differential equation is actually Bezier function. So we need to proceed. Now, before we proceed, let's consider two Eulerian integrals. We have beta function and we have gamma function. Look at gamma function. Gamma of n is 0 to infinity exponential minus x, s to power n minus 1 dx for n equals 0. So if we go back to equation 7, we can actually assume that our a naught is 1 over 2 raised to power n, 
gamma n plus one. This one factorial, no, one factorial is one times one. That is one, so it's not really important. I just put that there when I was trying to do, uh, to factorize, to form it. So note, when a1 is zero, we have our a2. So definitely, we can convert our a2 in form of a0. So this is my a0 now. I'll return it back. This assignment, I will advise to everybody, please try to do this assignment. It's very simple, just to remind you of gamma function. Please take a look at this book. Do this assignment and let me see it. Uh, I expect you to submit to me on Friday. This assignment number one, please take note. Submit to me on Friday, this Friday. That will be on the third or fourth or fifth, okay? This Friday. So that of A2 again, we express A2 in terms of gamma. We are A3 is zero, so we proceed like that. And remember, this is where we now substitute gamma of n plus one to the n of gamma of n. So we substitute A4. So now you now see now that all our A to n before that, we have it in terms of series, is now in terms of gamma now. So we substitute everything back to y1. So we have our y1. If you take a look at it very well, that is on page 12. You see how we obtain our y1, which is Bezier function. This is equal to it. This is called the Bezier function of the first kind of order, n. So we have our gel. So we proceed again to when case 2, k equals to minus n in equation 6. So we follow the same procedure again. We obtain this. Now, assignment number 2. Everybody work out when case 2, when k equals to minus n. Please work it out. I want to see how you obtain this equation 10. Please, everybody, that's assignment number two. So, by the time you do that, you combine the two together and you have the Bezier function of the first kind. So, let's take a look at the solution of Bezier function of order. Let's stop here first. So, submit your assignment on Friday. This Friday, I'm talking about this Friday. Please uh, take note of that. So, please submit. So, we are going to stop here. So, very soon I will explain the others. I will explain Bezier function of zero order so let's call it a day even we didn't get here in class today but let's stop it here now thank you very much thank you please submit your assignments to your classroom on friday thank you we share tutorial questions and answers it is all about understanding facts and sharing with others learning continues we are learning to know understand and share with others please, please. Subscribe, Subscribe to, to our, our channel, channel if you, you like, like our videos. videos.